Good morning. Welcome to my basement. It is Saturday morning, uh, March the 4th, and I am in Proverbs 18. I'm going to read the whole thing, but then I'm going to delve into two different parts of the scripture. A man who isolates himself seeks his own desire. So right there in itself, we are not to isolate ourselves away from the church. We are to find ourselves a gospel-believing, uh, power-believing, life-giving church. So right there in itself, a man who isolates himself seeks his own desires. So we're not to isolate ourselves from people. We are to be together in unity. He rages against all wise judgment. A fool has no delight in understanding, but in expressing his own heart. When the wicked comes, contempt comes also, and with dishonor comes reproach. The words of a man's mouth are deep waters. The wellspring of wisdom is a flowing brook. It is not good to show partiality to the wicked or overthrow the righteous in judgment. A fool's lips enter into contention and his mouth calls for blows. A fool's mouth is his destruction and his lips are the snare of his soul. The words of a table bearer are like tasty trifles and they go down into the inmost body. He who is slothful in his work is a brother to him who is a great destroyer. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run to it and are safe. The rich man's wealth is his strong city. And like a high wall in his own esteem, before the destruction of the heart of a man is haughty, and before honor is humility. So to be honored, you must be humbled, right? And before destruction, the heart of a man is haughty. So if you're all high and mighty, you're going to fall. You're going to be destroyed. Pride goes before the fall. So be humble, right? He who answers a matter before he hears it, it is folly and shame to him. The spirit of a man will sustain him in sickness, but who can bear a broken spirit? The heart of the prudent acquires knowledge, and the ear of the wise seeks knowledge. A man's gift makes room for him and brings him before great men. So I went into this one a little bit. Um, so a man's gift, a man's reward, what God has given you as your gift to his creation. So each and every one of us has a gift and a calling, and it's going to make room for us as long as we're humble before the Lord and before his people, and we're not haughty and prideful and rude and arrogant. Our gift that he's given us for his glory will make room for us, will broaden, it will um, be enlarging, it will be wide. So making room for your gift is that once your gift is known, once your gift is expanded upon, it will make room for you. So if you have this gift that you're humble and saying, Lord, use me, he will make room. He will widen and enlarge your area of influence. And he will bring you before great men. Older, exceeding, mighty, noble men. Women. This is written in a, in a time of it's not being sexist. Women can take this as well. It's Men is just saying people, right? So, my gift will make room for me and bring me before noble people, great people, exceeding people. Okay, so 
my reward, my gift that God has given me will broaden, enlargen my influence before great people, noble people, exceeding people, okay? The first one to plead his cause seems right until his neighbor comes and examines him. There's always two sides to a story. Don't always believe what you hear first because that probably isn't the complete story of what actually is going on. Casting lots causes contentions to cease and keeps the mighty apart. A brother offended is harder to win than a strong city and contentions are like the bars of a castle. And in this time and age, everybody gets offended at everything. Constantly, there's offense being had. And so we have to keep ourselves. So here in my Bible, I have little side um, notes that it gives for different words. And so offense, a major hindrance, revival offenses, unresolved bitterness, resentment, unforgiveness in broken relationships, grieve the Holy Spirit and undermine the unity and prayer vital to revival. When the Holy Spirit is grieved, the flow of his power, counsel, and comfort is stimmied, and the enemy is given opportunity to accuse, torment, imprison, and ultimately defeat us. This blocks our ability to give or receive God's mercy because our relationship with him is compromised and the church is prevented from presenting the glory of God to a community. If we repent of our offenses to God and make things right before others, Matthew 5, 23 and 24, we can live in the power of an ungrieved Holy Spirit. Thus released from anger and bitterness, we can expect continual revival, abounding in the grace of his forgiveness, mercy, and kindness. Mark 11, 25, and 26. So, a brother offended is harder to win than a strong city, and contentions are like the bars of a castle. A man's stomach shall be satisfied from the fruit of his mouth. From the produce of his lips he shall be filled. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruit. He who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. The poor man uses entreaties, but the rich answers roughly. A man who has friends must himself be friendly, but there is a friend who sticks closer than a brother. So I want to go back to death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruit. So, I've looked up in the Strong's Concordance, um, the Hebrew definitions for these. Excuse me. So, life and death are in the power of the tongue. Life, alive, life, Mary, and death, ruin, dead no more, are in the dominion, power, dominion, uh, terror, stroke. So here is, if you look at life and death are in the dominion of the tongue, the terror of the tongue, the stroke of the tongue, the throwing of the tongue. What we speak can be complete destruction, or it can be life-giving. We have the choice when we choose what to say. So no matter what comes at us, no matter what somebody does to us, what somebody says about us, it doesn't matter. It's how we respond to that. What we speak we can speak life into a situation or death into a situation. We can speak life and death into our health, into our finances, into our marriage, into our relationships with our kids, into relationships with people around us, life and death into our churches. What are we speaking out? And it's tough. 
gossiping. That's life and death. If you're gossiping about somebody, you're speaking death into a situation and death into those people. So then the tongue, evil speaker, talker, speech, and language. So if you look at it on the death side, so life and ruin are in the dominion, the terror, the throwing down of the evil speaker, of the talker, of the speech, of the language. So we can be alive, life in the dominion of our tongue, our language. Our language needs to be godly. It needs to be the word of God spoken. Whoops, all my little pictures that I keep in my Bible <laughs> just came out. Life and death. So if we want life, we need to live, eat, and breathe the word of God. Because if we're living the word of God, we're not going to speak death over anything. And it's so easy to get caught up in speaking death and, oh, woe is me. And, oh, how can this happen to me? And, oh, how can, can God let this happen to me? How can that person do that to me? How can they go around speaking, you know, negative about me? You can turn around and heap coals of fire on that person by being life-giving, by being uh, joyful, even in the situation by being kind to them, even if they're being ugly to you, you can be kind to them and heap coals of fire because they're going to be, well, I, I'm being mean to them and yet they're still nice to me. Like, I don't want to like them, but they're still being kind how can this be? And it's because we have Christ within us. So that person that's your waitress that might be having a bad day and they're just grumpy, instead of being hateful back, we can be godly. We can be life-giving back to them in our own household. We can set the atmosphere by what we speak. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. And you have a choice to speak life or to speak death over your situation. So I'm going to pray right now that God just minister to you in this scripture. Right? So it's in Proverbs 18 is what we just went over. And I believe that was verse 21. Let me look it up again so I'm not misquoting myself. Proverbs 18, 21. So the, a man's gift makes room for him is verse 16. But verse 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruit. So if you are loving See, and I was even at life and death are in the power of tongue. Death and life, just flip-flop them, are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it, so love, to have affection for, to love like a friend, okay? To love, they eat of its fruit. So it could be a bad apple or it could be a very juicy, healthy Oh, this is amazing, Apple. We choose what we love to eat, right? And so death can be the fruit that we're eating or life can be the fruit that we're eating. So dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you right now for the people that are listening, that they eat the fruit of your word, that they eat life giving fruit, that the death of the world will be no more in our mouths, that we will be nothing but life givers and that our gifts will make room for us and bring us before great men as your word has spoken. But Lord, I just pray right now that you tame our tongues and help us to 
to be caught, if we're speaking death over something, if we're making fun of somebody, if we're making fun of a situation, if we're speaking down about somebody, that you catch us immediately and, well, no, stop speaking that way. Speak life over that situation. Speak life over that person. And I thank you for it, Lord. I thank you that you bless the people this weekend, that you do great and mighty things in their life, that you birth a revival spirit within them, Lord Jesus. In your mighty name, we thank you for it, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. Be blessed. Remember, hit the like, subscribe, and notify. And if you like what you've heard, please share with your friends and family. Be blessed. Love y'all. Have a great weekend. Bye.